When Portuguese seafarers discovered this remote island in the mid-Atlantic, it must have seemed heaven sent, a place to pause, refill fresh water and collect edible fruit and vegetables before continuing on the next leg of a long and dangerous voyage. So important was it that it was kept a secret for decades. Portugal's hidden trump card in the struggle to control the spectacularly lucrative trade with the East. Eventually, though, the English, Dutch and French found out. And the island of St Helena became another pawn in the great game of maritime supremacy. I've come to St Helena to look at the remarkable lengths its occupiers went to to protect it from foreign enemies. So this was where you would fall back to if coastal fortifications were breached, and that's why this is so extensive. It could house a lot of military personnel. It shows how important St Helena was to the East India Company up until 1833 and then the crown thereafter. One of the important things to realize as well, strategically, St. Lena was vital until the Suez Canal opened, and then they didn't kind of require this route any longer, and so St. Lena was almost dropped during that particular period. For a lot of people around the world today, the name St. Helena may not be that familiar, but when you come here and you see the scale of investment, the effort that was made to protect this island, you realise how important it was, a vital strategic asset. And the result today is a legacy of military fortifications, well, unlike almost anywhere else on Earth. They took an island and they turned it into a fortress. After the abolition of slavery in 1807, the Royal Navy began intercepting illegal slave ships crossing the Atlantic. But the liberated Africans weren't taken back home. Instead, they were dropped here on the shores of St. Helena. Many were forced to live on this arid and hostile landscape called Rupert's Valley. Is there an estimate of how many of these liberated Africans, how many of their human remains lie, lie beneath our feet at the moment? Well, there's a, a guess of approximately eight to 10,000 of them lying here in this valley. Um, we've got two burial grounds and we're standing on the biggest of the two. Why does this site matter? This site matters to me as an African. It matters to St. Helena, it matters to Britain, and it matters to the rest of the world because it is the most significant physical trace of the transatlantic slave trade middle passage. The little we know about the men and women that were buried here has come from the precious objects they were buried with. These are the only clues mm. as to how they might have lived. Yes, yeah, so other than obviously the bodies themselves, this is all we have, that, um, the only tangible assets that tell us anything about them and their lives and, and their lifestyle and where they might have come from. And many of them probably never left their own their village um, back in Africa. And so they're in this completely alien place, um, unable to speak the language. Um, so this is all they have, This is all, and this is all we have to tell us about them. It would have been their link back to home, memories of home, and, and yeah, something really personal to them. St. Helena has also proved useful for safeguarding some of the British Empire's most implacable enemies. Zulus were imprisoned here. And in around 1900, a large contingent of Boers were brought during the war in South Africa. The Boers worked while they were here. They did various jobs, played their part in island life. Some even settled down, stayed behind after the war. As a result, as this cemetery bears witness, they're not remembered as hated foreign enemies, but as friends, as just another one of those diverse groups of people drawn from all over the world who've come here and have left a mark on this island and its people.